Star Wars The Clone Wars didn't pull all that many punches, especially when it wanted a storyline to hit the audience hard. It did a pretty good job of not developing everyone lives syndrome. Sure, there were characters you knew weren't going to die by the nature of the show being a prequel, but the show offset this by constantly killing off its own exclusive characters. With that said, there were a few characters with plenty of plot armor, and not all of them needed it. In this video, and in more videos to come, we're going to take a look at how a few moments of the Clone Wars would have gone without plot armor. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Now, a quick disclaimer, we're not necessarily criticizing how these episodes actually went, unless we actively say otherwise. Plot armor, in general, is not unforgivable, it's just bad in excess and, furthermore, it's fun to imagine how stories would go without it. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Let's start with one of the show's best episodes, Rookies. As I'm sure you all know, that episode introduced Fives, Echo, and Heavy, as they worked with Captain Rex and Commander Cody to retake the Rishi outpost and appraise the Republic of General Grievous's plan to take Kamino. Now, this episode involved less plot armor and more plot nerfing, which is basically the opposite for antagonists. Plot nerfing was frequently applied to B1 battle droids, to such an extent that their extreme stupidity almost breaks the show's suspension of disbelief. It would take a full year to list all the examples of that, and so today, we're just going to look at one, albeit one of the most egregious. It's hard to forget how rookies ended. Heavy made a desperate last stand trying to keep droids from swarming into the outpost's command center, where the clones rigged a bomb to destroy the place. He got shot in the back as he retreated inside, but he nonetheless crawled over the detonator, pressed the button, and successfully destroyed the Rishi outpost, alerting the Republic to an attack at the cost of his life. But as some of you may remember, the CIS could have easily prevented this. Grievous' battle droids retook the control center before Heavy blew the place to hell, and they watched him crawl over to the detonator. One droid asked if they took prisoners, then they silently settled on no, pointed their blasters at Heavy, and did absolutely nothing while he choked out one last line and pressed the button. This is rather absurd. Without plot armor or nerfing, these droids would have just pumped Heavy full of bolts before he could get to the button just like they did with Sergeant Onana earlier in the episode. There's just no way Heavy should have been able to succeed there. In this scenario, the outpost would have not been destroyed, Grievous's surprise attack on Kamino would have happened as planned, and a whole lot of clones would have died, including Heavy. Speaking of plot nerfing, General Grievous got screwed many, many times by the necessity of the plot, and this next episode is a prime example of that. At the start of Downfall of a Droid, Grievous attacked Anakin Skywalker's fleet above a gas giant in the Bothaway system, with twice the number of ships and a decided advantage. Anakin, however, managed to flip the tables by dropping ATTEs on the asteroids in the gas giant's rings, which opened fire on Grievous's ships and tore them apart from behind. Realistically speaking, however, there's no way these walkers could have gone undetected. They wouldn't have been powered off, as the crew still needed life support and such, which means they would have been detectable by simple sensor sweeps of the asteroid field. Not even a tactical droid would pass through an asteroid field without comprehensively scanning it for mines and the like, never mind General Grievous. Without plot nerfing, Grievous's ship would have detected those walkers and blasted the asteroids they were on to hell, all without breaking stride. Next up, we have the Deserter, specifically the scene in which Rex gets shot right in the chest by a droid sniper. He survives, but it's a close call. The bolts came very, very close to piercing his heart, and he had to be dropped off at the Laquane farm to recover for the rest of the battle. Rex's condition quickly improved, and after what looks like a few hours of bed rest, he's back on his feet and ready to kill some droids. We shouldn't even need to tell you that this is unrealistic. First of all, those droids shouldn't have missed. They're machines with built-in targeting computers, 
and Rex was coming at them on a straight line. Secondly, even if the shot did miss, and even if Rex's pauldron and armor absorbed most of the energy from the blast, the odds of him surviving wouldn't have been too good, and he sure as hell wouldn't have been back up to his feet so quickly. Above all, he would not have been in any condition to fight against those commando droids at the very end. No matter how you spin the situation, Rex should have died on Seleucami. Even if the droids missed, he wouldn't have been in good condition, and even if he pulled through, he would have been in no state to fight commando droids, and by all right, he should have ended up in a shallow grave in the Seleucami wilderness. Next up, we have Duel of the Droids, specifically Ahsoka Tano's battle with General Grievous. This scene was fairly straightforward. During a mission to destroy Skytop Station, Grievous's listening post, Ahsoka and a squad of clones ended up face to face with the droid general himself. Grievous killed all of the unnamed clones, but Ahsoka, Rex, and clone trooper Denal all escaped, and Grievous went after Ahsoka, who ultimately managed to escape him for good. This was, once again, rather absurd. Ahsoka was a very inexperienced Padawan at that point, while Grievous had the sabers of several Jedi Masters hanging on his belt. One of the most prolific Jedi killers of all time, second only to Darth Vader himself in terms of raw body count, would surely have been able to make short work of her, not to mention her clone comrades. Realistically, Grievous would have chopped Ahsoka up into tiny orange pieces, made short work of all the clones present, and started a chat with R3 about the Republic's plans within the space of a minute. Even if Ahsoka survived the first round with Grievous, in which she was battered aside after a few parries, she should never have been able to survive the second round. After regaining consciousness, she leapt in right in the nick of time, to stop Grievous from killing Rex, blocking his blade, and maintaining a saber lock for a good 20 seconds while she and Grievous traded boasts. This is simply ridiculous. Grievous easily could have just broken the saber lock and lopped her head off mid-quip, or he could have just gotten out another saber and done the same. Lastly, we have the episode Mystery of a Thousand Moons. This episode involved Anakin and Obi-Wan finding a cure for the blue shadow virus, while Ahsoka, Rex, Padme, Jar Jar and others attempted to not die from the deadly disease. Naturally, Anakin and Obi-Wan found the cure in the nick of time, and all four main characters made successful recoveries, together with a few, though not all, of the unnamed background clones. Of course, this was a stretch at best. The blue shadow virus was extremely deadly. The liquid-borne version killed in a matter of minutes, and while we know the airborne version was a bit more impotent, any virus capable of killing that quickly can only be tempered to a certain degree. We see several clones die of it in the episode, so we know that, for humans, it will prove fatal in a matter of hours. Simply put, there's no way Anakin and Obi-Wan got to Iego, which was on the other side of the galaxy and in separatist space, got the Reeksa route, dealt with the Confederacy's orbital grid, got all the way back, turned the route into a cure, constructed the airlocks necessary to get people out of the base, successfully extracted everyone, and gave them the cure in time. There's no way in hell that would have worked. This is especially true when you consider that we actually see clones die of the virus, and one of the characters who survived was a clone himself. Everyone else had hours at most after that first death, and it's impossible that they were extracted and cured in time. But there's a silver lining to this one. While we would have lost Rex, Ahsoka, and Padme, we would at least be rid of Jar Jar. So, those were five scenes from Star Wars The Clone Wars that would have played out a whole lot differently without plot armor. But what do you think? Are there any other moments like this that you can think of? We're going to do a part two of this at least, so discuss your favorite such moments in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, as per usual, make sure you check out all those links in the description below, including our main Geetsleys Discord where you can chat with myself and other Star Wars fans, our Geetsleys Gaming Network where you can play games with other Star Wars fans, and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel more than you already are by watching this video. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.